Hi there, this is Chris. Uh, how are you doing? Right, quick summary of this. This is a technique I came up with not long after particle flow had first came out. And I was having a lot of fun kind of messing about with it back in the early days. Um, I think which was what ran about version 6. Now, this is a method I've built to disperse rubbish and garbage and crap over a large area, um, non-uniformly. Um, a few years later, I was lucky enough to bump into Neil Blevins of Pixar and they used a similar method and um, did a kind of show and tell on how they used their method in WALL-E to make the garbage worlds. And the whole point of this is that they were able to just use a couple of guys that then to make the garbage worlds rather than having to rely on this. Um, now, what I have, or should have, if it saved, which is not likely, because Studios Max decided to crash on me, unfortunately, the last time I recorded. Let's have a quick look. No, it's not there, never mind. Yeah, I was busy um, creating this before um, the tutorial died. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some basic props that we need. So I need a box. Okay, that'll be like a fridge or a TV unit. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to put some polygons into it. Now, if you don't know how to use the most basic parts of the 3ds Max interface, then stop. Go and look at some primitive basic tutorials of which YouTube is full. Okay. It seems to be nothing but basic crappy tutorials, so help yourself. Um, and then come back here, and what I want you to do is make these five primitive objects. So we have a box, a sphere, a cylinder, a teapot, and a pyramid. And I'm giving pyramid 333 three, three for its height, width, and sorry, depth, width, and height. Okay. Then, you don't have to, but I'm going to convert all three of them to an editable poly. I'm going to hit Control S because I want to save my scene because I know what this is like. And I'm going to create a folder, which I call my workbench. And in here I'm going to put my pflow tut 1. Okay, so you don't have to do that, but if your 3ds Max is feeling a little bit crashy, it might not be a bad idea. Now, uh, I like doing tutorials that are kind of interesting, so let's add a little bit more interesting stuff to this. I'm going to apply a little bit of noise to these fellas. And I'm going to make it fractal, and I'm going to make it 888 on the XYZ, and that way we've got some warm literary stuff. Okay. And then I can change their colours if I want to as well. So I'm not going to, but I could, so that you'll be able to tell which ones are where. Now, what I want to do next is create a plane for them to drop on. So if I just do this, okay, at the minute it's 4x4, four four, so maybe I want to change that. Make it 12 by 12, or even 16 by 16 might be good. Okay, right click, convert to, edit the polygon. And what I can do with this is, I can break it up now and define parts. So I could use a mask and apply it using particle flow. But that just adds extra operators to it. Um, I'm just going to apply basically my particle flow to everything. I'm just going to press G to turn off grid. So, in order for that to work, what I'm going to do is cut some paths in this. So maybe I'll have a path here, and here, one coming down here, and one coming, I don't know. Actually, I think that'll probably be enough three paths, won't it? Yeah, it will. I'm just going to make a little square here as well, but there's less things going on. Okay, so now if I click detach, and I'm going to detach this as paths, okay, that way I know what they are. And because this doesn't have a name up here at the minute, I'm going to call this dump. Because that's basically what we're making, we're making a dump. Now, I want to go into my um, soft selection over here, and I'm going to use soft selection. And if I just collect, collect, select here, and increase my fall off, okay, I can basically have slightly more control over which parts it's going to affect. Then I can do this and just basically get some simple primitive hills in. But maybe another one here. And again, like that. And then if I come in over here, I can do one here. Go back there, you. Here, here, maybe here. And there, and just pull them up a little bit. There we go. So now we have some very simple. Hills, okay, and 
to come back here to my modifier panel, close my soft selection down, and I can even mesh smooth it a bit. There we go, it's now. The non path bits are much smoother. So let's do save. That way, if the tutorial crashes out again while I'm recording it, I'll be able to come back to it. Okay, so we have everything we need here now to build our basic dispersed litter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up Particle Flow by hitting 6. Now, if you've never used Particle, Bef Particle Flow before, you've only ever used 3ds Max, it can seem a little bit scary and worrisome at first. But don't worry about that, it isn't. It's uh, absolutely easy. <coughs> what we have here is basically a flow chart system. So if I was to put an empty flow and just drag and drop, the only thing you'll see here is render, and that's because the only node that's active now is the one that tells it that we want to be able to render and see what's going to be happening in the viewport. If I was to, I'll just delete that, put standard flow in, you'll see it contains slightly more stuff. There we go. So let me just quickly walk you through this if you've never used particle flow before. This is our birth, so this will tell us how many particles we're going to be spawning. This is our position icon, which tells us where they're going to be spawning how fast they're going to be spawning and moving, the rotation of the objects, the shapes involved, and what they're going to be displaying down here. Okay, and if you look down here, when we created it, it also created a handy dandy little particle flow tool. Now if I go forward to like this, you'll see that's what our basic primitive particle system does. We don't want it to do any of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead, I'll just bring this back so you can see it slightly better is we want to change position icon which is here. Now if you look down here you've got position object and that will place particles on a set of reference objects. So if I just drag that over the top of this it will replace it usually. Now I'm going to delete this one. There we go and now if you look the particles just generating from zero space because they don't know where to go from. So now we can add some emitter objects. And I'm adding this as my emitter object and now you can see that the ground is raining and the ground is raining these particles it'll only rain them up to, th rain them up to 30 frames because the birth tells them to if I told the birth to keep raining particles to frame 100 it would do that as well and of course this will control how many particles there are so if I wanted 2000 particles as you can see we get a lot more now <coughs> speaking of the amount of particles you can see this is quite important let's go to the render and here you can see the visibility minute visibility is at 100 for the rendering and for the display it's at 100 if your computer is not too fast and you're having problems you can drop that down but just remember what you're going to see is not what you're going to get at that point anyway let's change stuff so speed speed is zero we don't need speed what we want and you can see here is for our particles to just settle on this object now birth also isn't particularly important to us but we'll change that in a bit and the rotation, that will come in handy. We're not wanting to add any spin to this. And the shape, well, at the minute it's a 3D cube. So if I was to put display and change this to geometry, you can see now that we've got lots of boxes appearing all over our junkyard. OK? So it's a start, but it's kind of not what we're looking for, if you know what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my shape. So if I go down here and have shape instance, just here and I'll just drag it in front and just remove our shape cube everything vanishes then and for shape instance I can now use particle geometry objects just here so if I come down and try and get these over here I can now add this box or that sphere Okay, so let's add that box, like that, shape instance. Now, I put in a second one, and you can see our shape instance box has been overridden by shape instance sphere. Okay, so we're getting one of one a load of one and then a load of the other. Now there's various ways that we can get around doing this. Okay, and the easiest way to do it will be to do a group. So I'll just delete that and come back to my boxes. And what I'm going to do instead 
is I'm going to make a group out of these. See these four objects here. So if I go over here to group and I'm going to call them our garbage group. And at this point these will become one object. And when that happens, if I then use this and pick, well you can see that it suddenly becomes a big old mess because what it's doing is it's instancing all five simultaneously based on the pivot point in the middle. And that's no use to us. Let's make separate particles instead of group members. And now you can see instead that everything is starting to get covered in uh, rubbish properly, all half buried in and the way it should be. Now what we can also do at this point is we can change the scale of these so they're going to look slightly different all the time. Now I'm sorry you can't see it too well, obviously I only want to record on a single screen, not double. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying a scale modifier to this. So I'm going to put the scale in just after. Okay, here we are, scale. And what I can do is I can add some scale variation. So maybe I can make them 25% bigger in all directions, but not constrain the proportions. Okay, so now we're going to get more change. So that'll add a certain amount of uh, certain amount of flexibility to what we're doing. As you can see, we still don't really have enough garbage to cover everything. But that's not really a problem. We can uh, we can increase that soon. Um, we've changed the rotation on it, obviously, so it's nice and random. And I think what I'd also like to do is apply something called a keep apart. Now, if I put a keep apart in this then the particles will have to keep away from each other by a certain amount. So at the minute the core radius is 10, if I was to increase that to 100 for example, they all have to stay away from each other by a certain amount. Now let's reduce that. So I don't want them being too far from each other, but I still want them being able to cluster. There we go. Might reduce that again actually. I'll reduce the force down. Certainly reduce the acceleration limit. And let's see how this is starting to look. Now you can see as they come in they're starting to move out of each other's way in order to make it look better. Plenty of garbage though. But we don't need to have that happen. I mean it's pretty, don't get me wrong. You know, you can use it like a bacterial spread of garbage. But if we go to our birth operator just here, we're not constrained by our timeline. So for example, if we was to have the emit start start at minus one and the emit stop at zero, then suddenly the only things we need to really worry about here is at what point we think the garbage is far enough away from each other. Now I'm going to turn off that because I don't think I need to use keep apart, I don't really have enough garbage. So there we go, I'll just get rid of that again. And I'm going to rename my event like so. Uh, I didn't really name that very well, did I? I'm, I'm doing that because if Pete Draper sees this tutorial and I haven't done renaming on it, he'll come around and break the kneecaps. Right, now I'm going to maybe put 4,000 pieces of garbage in, which is enough really to really stand out there like that. And now you can see that our base geometry is more or less covered. There's a few gaps in here. But the good thing about the gaps is that we could place some hero pieces, you know, pieces that stand out if you wanted to. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. I think that's going to be enough for me. Okay, so I've got my simulation. It's basically ran. Um, I don't need to do anything else with this. Now, if I'm happy with this, there's a couple of things I can do. At the minute, this is low detail. This is just a particle system. Um, I can make it a permanent system if I just go over to, let's see, my compound objects, and I put a mesher in. So here's my mesher, okay? And if I pick my object, I now have a permanent copy like that, which I can then convert to an integral polygon. And the good thing about that is, it means that I can then change my garbage if I want to, and make different kinds. So for example, if I was to press 6 and go under here, um, let me see. Oh, 
I can change my seeds here. And my seeds will start changing things for my placement. So, let's see. There we go. So now we have two distinctly different. I'll just rotate this. Two distinctly different dumps. They're placed next to each other. Now, as you can see, look completely different. And it was just a case of changing the seeds just a couple of times. Yeah? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of our original particle flow. Like that. Okay, and that will just lead our pathways. And I can get rid of our original geometry if I want to as well. Because I'm not going to be using it again. Well, not today. And it's certainly not difficult to create. Now, if I go into my top view, what I can do is just move this back over the original path like that. Okay, and there is our particle flow guard adjust. Hope you found that useful. And if you have, subscribe to the YouTube channel and send us a comment. See you later.